How to go organic with AI, harnessing the power of your subconscious mind. What if I told you the key to unlocking your full potential lies not just in technology, but in the hidden power of your mind? Welcome to the fascinating world of organic AI, where cutting-edge technology meets the magic of your subconscious. For years, AI has been seen as a cold, calculating force. But what if it could be used to enhance our natural intuition and unleash our creative potential? Bridging the gap between the conscious and subconscious mind using AI is a fascinating concept. AI as an ally to your intuition. AI as a tool for enhanced intuition. Let's dive into how AI can analyze vast amounts of data identifying patterns that align with your subconscious insights. Imagine AI as your personal sixth sense whisperer, helping you make decisions with a powerful blend of intuition and information. Biomimicry in AI development. Did you know AI is inspired by nature? We'll explore how neural networks mimic the human brain creating a technology that can learn and adapt in ways that feel surprisingly organic. The subconscious mind, your hidden powerhouse. Understanding the subconscious mind. We'll take a quick journey into the mysterious world of the subconscious, exploring its influence on our thoughts, behaviors, and even creativity. AI and mindfulness. Forget boring meditation apps. We'll show you how AI is being used to personalize mindfulness practices, creating experiences that resonate with your subconscious and unlocking inner peace. Dream analysis with AI. Ever wonder what your dreams mean? We'll delve into the exciting world of AI-powered dream analysis, where technology can help you decipher those subconscious messages and unlock personal growth. Organic AI in Action, Practical Applications um, I think it will be a massive productivity boost for existing job roles and it will create many new job roles. And I don't want to pretend that there will be no job loss. There will be some job loss, but I think it may not be as bad as, as people are worried right now. Um, I know that we're having an important societal discussion about AI's impact on jobs. And uh, from a business perspective, I actually find it even more useful to not think about AI automating jobs, but instead AI is automating tasks. So it turns out that most jobs, you know, we, can, we can think of as a bundle of tasks. And when I work with you know, large companies, well often many CEOs will come and say, hey, Andrew, I have 50,000 or 100,000 employees. What are all my people actually doing? Right? Turns out none of us really know in detail what our workforces are doing. But I found that if you look at the jobs and break them down into tasks, then analyzing individual tasks for potential for AI automation or augmentation often leads to um, uh, interesting uh, opportunities to use AI. And maybe one concrete example, um, a radiologist. We've talked about AI maybe automating some parts of radiology, but it turns out that radiologists do many tasks. They read x-rays, um, but they also do patient intake, gather patient histories, they consult with patients, mentor younger doctors, they operate the machines, maintain the machines, so they actually do many different tasks. And we found that when we go into businesses and do this task-based analysis, um, uh, it often surfaces interesting opportunities. And regarding the job question, it turns out that for many jobs, if AI automates you know, 20, 30% of the tasks in a job, then the job maybe is actually decently safe. But what will happen is not that AI will replace people, but I think people that use AI will replace other people that don't. So some job roles really disrupted right now, uh, call centers, call center operations, or customer support is one. Feels like tons of companies is using AI to nearly uh, uh, automate that or automate a large fraction of that. Um, I think sales operations, sales back office, those routine tasks are being uh, automated. Um, I think a bunch of others. I feel like we see different teams trying to automate some of the lower 
um, uh, you know, legal work, uh, some of the low level marketing work, a bunch of others. But I would say the two biggest I'm seeing are customer, customer service uh, and then maybe some sort of sales operations. Uh, but there, I think there's a lot of opportunities out there. Personalized learning. Imagine an education system that taps into your subconscious learning style. AI can create personalized learning experiences, catering to your strengths and subconscious preferences, making learning faster and more effective. Creative AI Tools Unleash your inner Picasso. Let's explore AI-powered creative tools that help you tap into subconscious ideas. Imagine AI that assists you with writing, painting, or composing music. A true meeting of minds. Health and wellness. AI can become your holistic wellness partner. Imagine apps that track your sleep patterns, aligning with your body's natural rhythms, or recommend activities that resonate with your subconscious needs. In mental health, AI-powered tools can be used for therapies that target subconscious patterns, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, to treat conditions like anxiety and depression. The Big Questions, Ethics and the Future The Ethics of AI and the Mind As we delve deeper into organic AI, ethical considerations become crucial. We'll discuss the potential risks and benefits of using AI to influence the subconscious mind. Um, each one has some problems. So, since humans can do it, why don't we look again? Because that was the initial also um, uh, perspective at the beginning of AI. Why don't we look again on how our mind and our brain are functioning now that we have more knowledge about these two objects within it, even if we don't have a complete knowledge? Uh, and why don't we take again inspiration from the current neuroscience and cognitive science to advanced AI. And, and the idea is that, you know, this has been done for many, many decades, but now we have more knowledge and we also have AI, which is much more mature than it was many decades ago. Uh, so the thinking fast and slow theory, which is the one that we take as our main inspiration, or system one and system two. System one usually is the, called the thinking fast and system two, the thinking slow. Uh, it's a theory that was uh, uh, developed by uh, Cunningham and written in this uh, book. In, um, um, and that basically is a very simple theory that oversimplifies things, of course, in our mind. And that says that we have two broad modalities with which we make decisions. The system one of thinking fast, which we use almost in all our decisions, 95% of the time, in everything that we are more, very familiar with and we just react you know, auto, automatically without even thinking about it. Uh, so it's very fast, almost at, it works at an unconscious uh, way. Um, and uh, it may be subject to bias and to errors because we don't even think about the problem, we just react to a very familiar situation. System two instead is when we use it or thinking slow, when we realize that we need to reason about the problem in order to find a good solution. So it's very effortful, it requires all our attention uh, and so it can be much slower and uh, we usually use it when the decision is, we perceive that the decision, uh, that the problem is more complex than a certain uh, threshold. And usually, since we put all that effort and uh, attention, usually it's not, uh, it's not, it, it's reliable. So this is the big picture about these two modalities. This theory, thinking fast as law, has inspired many AI researchers already for several years since it was uh, published. Uh, so here, for example, you see uh, the three Turing Awards of uh, 2019 at AAAI triple, at 2020 in a panel discussion together with uh, Cunningham himself. Um, so th there is a lot of, uh, there are a lot of not just this panel, but there are a lot of panels, debates, workshops, 
talks, papers, projects, so a lot of activities. If you Google Thinking Fast and Slow in AI, you'll find many, many different things. Uh, so it means that this year really inspired many researchers already. Here are just two examples of two things that, uh, that I'm familiar with. Um, so this is why I want to go a little bit more in detail into this theory and then tell you how we translated it for AI. So system one, thinking fast, as I said, is very fast, uh, as the name says, and usually can perform the very uh, cognitively easy or familiar tasks. It's very local, parallel, can act in parallel, um, and in human beings, it can build the model of the world out of, out of the information that is collected. System two is 100, 100 more complex tasks. As I said, is, since it requires all our attention, as I mentioned, it is very global and sequential. You cannot handle more than one thing with system two at a time. Okay? It's just one and then another one and then another one. Uh, the two things are the two systems are not completely separated. Um, system two can employ search uh, uh, algorithms that are cut, uh, pruned in many ways because of system one techniques. So the two things are not completely separated, but they work together. Um, we often switch over time from system two to system one when we. Uh, have to solve a problem which is not familiar for us. So at the beginning, we use system two. We think carefully how to solve the problem. Uh, and then when it, we solve it many, many times, it becomes familiar and we switch to system one. Uh, I'm telling you this behavior that we have because we will see that this will emerge also in our approach to thinking fast as low in the machine. Human AI symbiosis. What does it mean for the future of humanity when AI and our subconscious processes become intertwined? Let's explore the philosophical aspects of this exciting new frontier. Organic AI in the real world. Success stories. We'll meet real people who have successfully integrated AI with subconscious practices to achieve remarkable results. Innovative companies. Get inspired by companies at the forefront of organic AI. We'll profile these pioneers who are shaping the future of this powerful technology. And yet, here's another sort of interesting idea, which is, because um, you say, like, wh where did consciousness arise? The universe started off as basically quarks and leptons, and it quickly became hydrogen and uh, helium, lithium, like basically elements of the periodic table. Uh, but it was you know, like mostly hydrogen, basically, um, and then, and then over a long period of time, uh, you know, 13.8 billion years later, that hydrogen became sentient. But, so, where along the way did consciousness? Where is consciousness? What's the line of consciousness and not consciousness right. between hydrogen and here? A glimpse of tomorrow. Emerging technologies. We'll peek into the future, exploring cutting edge technologies that could further revolutionize the way AI interacts with our subconscious minds. Vision for the future. Imagine a world where AI seamlessly integrates with your subconscious, enhancing your capabilities and well being in ways we can only dream of today. We can make humanity smarter with AI. Okay. I mean, AI basically will amplify human intelligence. It's as if every one of us will have a staff of smart AI assistants. They might be smarter than us. They'll do our bidding. Perhaps execute a task in ways that are much better than we could do ourselves because they'd be smarter than us. And so it's like everyone would be the, the boss of a staff of super smart virtual people. So we shouldn't feel threatened by, by this any more than we should feel threatened by 
being the manager of a group of people, some of whom are more intelligent than us. I certainly have a lot of experience with this, <laughs> of, uh, you know, having people working with me who are smarter than me. Um, that's actually a wonderful thing. So uh, having machines that are smarter than us that assist us in our, all of our tasks, our daily lives, whether it's professional or personal, I think would be an absolutely wonderful thing. Because intelligence is the most, uh, is the commodity that is most in demand. That, that's really what, I mean, all the mistakes that humanity makes is because of lack of intelligence, really, or lack of knowledge, which is, you know, related. So, um, making people smarter, which just can only be better. I mean, for the same reason that, you know, public education is a good thing. And books are a good thing. And the internet is also a good thing, intrinsically. And even social networks are a good thing, if you run them properly. <laughs> it's difficult, but, you know, you can. Um, uh, because, you know, it, it helps the communication of information and knowledge and the, tra the transmission of knowledge. So AI is going to make humanity smarter. And the analogy I've been using is the fact that perhaps an equivalent event in the history of uh, humanity to what might be provided by generalization of AI assistant is the invention of the printing the printing press, it made everybody smarter. The fact that people could uh, have access to uh, to books, books were a lot cheaper than they were before. And so a lot more people had an incentive to learn to read, which wasn't the case before. Um, and people became smarter. It, it enabled the enlightenment, right? There wouldn't be an enlightenment without the printing press. It enabled uh, philosophy, rationalism, uh, escape from religious doctrine, uh, democracy, science, uh, and certainly, without this, it wouldn't be there wouldn't have been the American Revolution or the French Revolution. The future of AI is organic. Are you ready to harness the power of your subconscious mind with the help of this revolutionary technology? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's explore the exciting possibilities of organic AI together. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more mind-blowing content on the future of technology and human potential. Until next time, keep thinking big and keep going organic with AI.